bit of a recap. Maybe we could just have a quick look at uh, falling. We looked at jumping, so now we're going to look at falling. It's exactly the same, except in reverse. Um, let's say you fall from a height h. Here you are, you're falling from a height h. You have a mass m. And the only force that is acting on you is gravity. There are no other forces at this point when you're in the air, right? The earth pulls you to the ground. So the only force that's acting on you is your weight. So we can use a, we can put an mg here if you like. We can write w equals mg. That would be the only force. There's no reaction force because you're not in contact with the ground. And then uh, a split second later, you would hit the ground. Uh, you didn't, you grew a bit. No, you didn't grow. Here is uh, um, during landing, if you like. Uh, during the landing. Now there are two forces. You would have um, the reaction force of the ground, and you would have your weight. Uh, and you would have, uh, here, let's say you're at the top of the motion, you'd have u equals zero. If you're just, at the, you're, say you're falling from a certain height, initial velocity zero. Over here, you would have u equals minus v max, and you would have v, if you like, equal to zero during the landing. And that's when the acceleration takes place, the a. Because the ground, the ground has to push up to slow you down. It reduces your velocity from minus 10, 20 meters per second to zero. So therefore, if you look at the acceleration, it would be zero minus minus. So it comes out plus. So again, your mass would still be m. So the normal reaction. R slows you down. When they're in contact with the ground, or on contact with the ground. So um, and you could say you can hit the ground. with a velocity minus v max. So it makes sense to you that it would be negative, because it's just because it's going down. And we assume in all our calculations there is a constant deceleration. The reason we assume a constant deceleration is because we want to use the equations of motion. v equals u plus at, s equals ut plus a half at squared, v squared minus u squared is 2as. To use those equations, we have to have a constant deceleration. So we, we always assume a constant uh, deceleration, if you like, which is a negative acceleration. Uh, so you can say deceleration, if you like. Which is the same thing as a negative acceleration you like. But the acceleration would be upwards. So that may, maybe it's confusing to put negative acceleration here. Let's leave that. I don't want you to confuse you with the sign. When you hit the ground, the ground has to push upwards. You, otherwise, you'd go straight through to the center of the earth. So when you land, the ground has to be pushing upwards. It makes sense. So a constant deceleration, basically from 
minus v max to zero, so a constant deceleration from minus v max to zero over some contact time. Let's call it Tc. So that acceleration during the landing, during landing, you could say that A equals, um, it would be zero minus, minus V max. I don't know, I'll rush it, but. So we'd have zero minus minus V max divided by the contact time, which is going to be V basically V max over Tc, which is greater than zero. So it's, it's going to be positive. Okay. If I do an example on the board from one of the clips, then you can see how we put these things in. I think that's the best way to do it by example. Um, so I'll do, um, I'll do the Hancock throwing the kid in the air clip, which I can quickly put up. So we're going to try to figure out the acceleration of the kid. Things to him. So basically, he throws the kid in the air, right? Okay, so up he goes in the air. Uh, he'll reach a certain point, as you know, where he'll, velocity will be instantaneously zero. But what's his acceleration at the top of his motion? Negative g, right? He's still accelerating. Even though his velocity is zero for that instant, he's still accelerating because acceleration is defined as change in velocity. So after that instant being zero at the top, he would be coming down. So you'd still get change in velocity would be minus, minus. It would still come out as negative g. Then he falls down a second later. Oh, sorry. So he catches him very, very quickly. Um, so we're going to look at that clip. I'm going to use the board over here for a second, I guess. So in that clip, he throws the child in the air. The child comes, comes down to the ground. So here's the child. He's a little chubby. He's coming down, and he, get, he catches him. He's Hancock's big hand. I draw him with uh, four, four fingers. Uh, so he catches the kid, and then he slows him down uh, over, this is Hancock's hand, OK? You can do a much better job of drawing it. So he catches him, and he slows him down. You saw that in the clip. So here's the kid. And then after a split second, the kid's going to be here. And this distance is about one meter. Right? He, it's about one meter, the distance over which he slows him down. So when he catches him, if, he, if I can put him in contact, if you like, is even better. Same thing. There's a reaction force here, R, between the hand upwards to slow him down. Reaction force. And the kid also has weight. So that would be mg. Okay? And it would also be the same reaction. We're assuming it's the same reaction force here and the same weight. It gets a little complicated, but it's, it's exactly the same idea as, as the other clips. So he slows the kid down 
over a distance of one meter. The speed of the child at this point we have uh, is about 120 meters per second. You did this in a homework, right? Okay, so let's write the information for the, for the kid. So we have uh, U, V, we have uh, H, we have A, uh, we have um, maybe T, and we just need to fill that in, okay? And this will be during the catch. During the catch, okay? Okay, so what's U? Right. Might, does that make sense to people? It's minus 120 meters per second. The speed that he he's catches him at is minus 120. So we put minus 120 in here from the homework. What about V? Right. An H? I need a sign for H. Is it plus one or minus one? And A, we don't know, because that's during the catch. It's not minus G. This is when he's in contact. And then T, we don't know. That's the contact time. But we don't need that, do we? Because we have enough information. So which equation would we use to figure out the acceleration? Right. V squared minus U squared equals 2AS, <coughs> if you like, S for distance, where the distance in this case is h, it's a height, it's a vertical, okay? So then all we do is we plug in these quantities and we can figure out the acceleration on impact that he, when he catches him. And if it's 1g, then the kid's fine. If it's more than 3g's, then it could be dangerous. More, 3g's is about the space shuttle, it's liftoff. That's quite, it's, it's not easy, not much fun. But you survive, probably, I'm sure you would. So. You put in the numbers, okay? We have 0 minus 120 squared is equal to 2a times by minus 1 meter, okay? So the minus signs cancel, which is nice, because we want that. We want it to be positive. So we would end up with a equals uh, 120 squared divided by 2, which is, well, 12, 120 squared is like 12 squared, it's 144 with some zeros. So it comes out as something like 770 or 700. 7,000 meters per second squared. Okay. I think. Which is, if you want that in number of Gs, that tells you that it's 700 Gs. Okay. So this tells us that it would not survive being caught at that speed, right? You basically, you, you, know, you know that if you fall out of an aeroplane, <laughs> you're not going to survive unless maybe if you land in thick, thick, thick snow or some trees. People have survived come falling out of planes on rare occasions if you can basically increase this, this, this thing here, if you can increase the contact time. So if people have had trees break, you call it breaking their fall. They've had trees break their fall, and the way they break their fall is by increasing this. And if you increase this, then you reduce this, and you have a, the smaller acceleration, you have a better chance of survival. So that's really the thing that tells us that he wouldn't survive, the acceleration. We can figure out the force, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, just from thinking about F equals MA, if we look at the forces on the hand, you'd agree that if we write F equals MA, that you'd have R minus MG equals MA. You'd agree with that. And then you could say that um, uh, R equals MG plus MA. Now, from a physical point of view, you'd agree that the R should be upwards. So, if that's positive, you know that's positive, so this must be positive. That's because it has to be in the same direction as R minus mg. So R minus mg, if you like, this is this quantity has to be directed upwards because he's catching him, so he has to push up. 
that's one way. So then you could say that a, a, M has no sign, it's a mass. So A has to be in the same direction as these two, as R minus MG, the force, the net force. So the net force and the acceleration are always in the same direction because we have F. Really, if you write F equals MA, it's really a vector. So the, the A and the F are always in the same direction. Um, another way of looking at it, because that's a, you could also explain it this way, that just from looking at the change in speed, he goes from uh, minus 120 to zero. So what's the acceleration? The acceleration would be uh, zero minus minus 120 divided by t. So you get a plus sign. All right? So you either, either think about it from the forces or think about it from the definition of what, accelerate, what acceleration means. Acceleration or means change in velocity over time, and you always have to think of a change as being, change always means final minus initial, always. That's something to take, you should, that you need to remember, that when we talk about a change, we always mean the final value minus the initial, and that means you'll get the sign right. Okay, and we could figure out the force now. So we have this equation, and you can do this yourself, and I'll, I'll post the solutions to the practice problems. But if you wanted to know the force on the child, then all you need to do is put, put in the value of A, put in the value of mass of the child, 50 kilograms, and put in G, which is 10. Because it's, it's one of the key points of this class, is to understand the large accelerations that actually happen when, when you have two things contacting each other. Whether it's a land or a punch, it's always the high acceleration that does the damage. And we always get that, we typically would get that for a vertical problem, it's always going to end up looking like that. And that tells us something, that tells us that the reaction force has to do two things. One is it has to support the weight, and the other thing is it has to slow down the object, slow down the mass. That's what that A means. All right, so the MA is the thing that gets you, the thing that causes the damage. So I'm standing here at this in the, on, uh, on the floor, and basically I have R equals mg, and it, it doesn't really hurt for me to walk around. But there is, a, gravity's pulling me down, and when you get older, it's harder to get up. But if I, and I'm not going to do it, if I stood on that table and leapt off, I feel more force. The ground is more likely to break if you jump from a height, and the reason is because you have this term as well, all right? This would be just standing, this would be leaping, because you have to slow down the object. So it's always that MA that does the damage, okay? All right. <laughs>